frightens and worried. I feel let down by the system. We would have had much more people. Hello and welcome to today's Better Moment webinar. My name is Laura Graff and I'm the Marketing and Communications Manager of Better Moment. It's great to see that so many of you found the time to join us tonight. I can already spot some familiar names, but we would love to know where you're all joining from. So feel free to use the chat tool to share your name and location and to say hi to everyone else. You can also use this chat tool to ask questions during the webinar, and we will address them after the presentation in our Q&A session. You can find the chat tool at the bottom right corner of your screen, or you can access it via the menu at the top. So tonight's lecture will be presented by Sisse Brember, who some of you may have already met on one of our workshops, for instance, in Bhutan, Tibet, Morocco, or Svalbard. And um, we gave Sissi's Sissi's lecture the title My Life with National Geographic, as this has been a big part of her life and also influenced her photography to a great extent. However, this lecture will also address how to find your voice as a photographer and how to transfer the thought of an image into an actual photo. I already had a peek at the presentation and I'm very excited to hear more about the images Sissi chose for tonight. Hence, I will stop rambling on now and give the floor to Better Moments expert Sisse Brimberg. And hi, Sisse. Good evening. Yeah, good. Um, good evening, good morning, good afternoon, good, good in the middle of the night time, everybody. Um, thank you for joining me. <clears throat> and thank you to Christian for making this happening happen. Um, I'm really delighted. I'm also, I have to confess, a wee bit nervous about this because sitting and talking to a screen is not something I have tried before. Um, all my presentations have always been to an audience, uh, big or small, uh, but you will send me some good juju and um, I hope I then pick up on it and, uh, and I will do my very best. So uh, let's just say this thing. Uh, I have worked for the geographic or with the geographic for many years since uh, 1976. I came to the geographic and I have worked in many different capacities for them. I, uh, I really have benefited from it. My whole life at the Geographic has been a visual um, education. Being together with all the other photographers was, has always been very inspirational. And also all the, the stories and assignments that I've been doing have, um, have all given me some insight to a, a different part of the, the human life uh, or animal life and, and um, it's it's been amazing and um, behind all that is like a, a kind of the this thought process of what what is it what what goes on in my head when I take pictures um, God only knows actually but <laughs> no I do know what goes on um it is it's a matter of you see the image there's a little alarm bell that goes up on in your head and you're just then um starting to think about it because when i'm out working of course i'm always thinking about images and and then um then comes the thing about translating that little alarm bell into there is an image here, there is a picture here. I need to, to do that. And, and then you, you raise up your camera. Sometimes you raise it up all the way to your eyes. Sometimes there's not time enough and you not do that, but you push the button as, uh, as things are happening in front of you. Um, a lot of my favorite shots are done that way. Uh, I don't know if that says something good about my photography, 
um, but you, you, know, you never know, you'll be the judge. Um, and I may be a very sensitive human being, you know, I get, uh, I get all kind of twisted and uh, up as a pretzel if something says some, or if somebody says something to me. But when it comes to my photography, I really have developed a pretty thick skin which has been wonderful and um and you can say whatever you want about my photography it's it's all fine with me so uh, let's get going here a little bit whoop we can't go anywhere let's see yeah we do this way so um as i said national geographic has uh, had a an a immense um influence on on me as as a photographer and and you can also say that you can spot a geographic photographer i, I mean i can many of them um because at a certain time we all kind of got hashed out to be kind of the same we all had to be capable of of the taking care of assignments then uh, it had to be lighting a big jobs or it had to be uh, photojournalism we had to do it all. Today, that's a whole different game. Today, it's like you have to be specialized in something, and that's how you get your recognition. Here, this is me, uh, and um, and this is this is taken on assignment in Montreal, and um, and of course, this is taken in the early '90s, and here. This is this is me that was taken last year, and um, yeah, well, so there are around thirty years of uh, difference between these two images. Of course, I've taken care of choosing a couple of images where I look good because otherwise I would feel bad about that. But that's not the point. The point is, what was the point? The point was the first picture was an analog picture. The second picture is a digital picture and it's, it's an amazing revolution that we have gone through all together and um, i i think a lot of people felt jumping ship when it became a digital photography i personally embraced it i loved it i couldn't wait to get rid of film um, there, there are other people that really think that that the um, Filmic look is absolutely fantastic. I am not joining the the crew because I think digital. I I love it uh, tremendously. So what is it that we all do? We are expressing our creativity through photography, um, and that's what we are. We all become image addicts. I think. We are taking, I think, more images in a minute right now on Earth than that was taken in all of the 19th century. So that just tells you how it's uh, hammering down over us. And uh, creativity is allowing you to make mistakes. Art is knowing which ones to keep. And that is as true as it can be. And that's why you would never edit in your camera. That is a bad thing to do. You've got to get it into your screen before you can make that decision. I'm going to show you a couple of pictures here from, uh, from the days of the magazine. Um, this picture is taken in the San Bernardino Strait. And as you can see, it is, um, it's rather windy. It's the start of a um, typhoon. And, um, and I'm out there on that little outrigger. Um, when we started out in the early morning, it was just like a, a warm breeze on the beach. It felt, it felt good. And, and why, are the, why are the waves not bigger? Because there was an island right in front of us uh, sheltering us, but still, it's pretty tough weather and it, it's tough to that extent that my driver that I had with me, he started to pray out loud and, and, um, and what do you do when things get a little rough? You start to take pictures because it will definitely 
take your mind off the, the danger that's in front of you. And that's one thing. Um, I have never undertaken any really dangerous assignments, but um, that my assignments have had an ele element of danger in them. And the only thing that was on my mind when, when it went like that was I just wanted to make it home to my two children. And I never, I never mentioned it at home uh, because I never wanted to put that pressure on the kids that they would know on top of it that mom is going out to something that's really dangerous. I, I made it sound um, a little bit better than sometimes it was. So you see, I created typical geographic imagery, you know, nice out there together with the people, um, all good. There was, of course, a couple of guys with some guns in the background, but that's okay. Um, ballet, I have always loved photographing ballet. And as a matter of fact, it was the first thing I ever did. I photographed ballet in Copenhagen at the Royal Theater, and I was no more than, I think, 17 or 18 years old when that happened. And um, I stood on stage and I felt very grown up. And then um, I thought to myself, ooh, this is really good. I'm together with some of the people that I so much enjoy um, and admire. And here I am standing together with them. And um, from there on, I've always tried to photograph ballet uh, for every story I've been doing. And this is in St. Petersburg, also in St. Petersburg. It is, um, of course, a rehearsal. And this is just the way we all see things differently. Um, this is definitely, it, it speaks to that, all these different ways of how we all render imagery from our brain. And I went to Copenhagen way later and I did a book in Copenhagen and it was because I was photographing for the geographic. I got the idea, this is really amazing what takes place behind the, the curtain here because it, it's just such an elaborate thing. and. And the Danes very often do not know exactly what the Royal Theatre is all about, but it is beautiful. So. so it's all about how you see the world. And as I just said, we all see it very differently. There's no doubt about that. And what do we do? Now these days, this is what most of the world do. Um, they photograph what's taking place in front of them. Um, they do not really appreciate what's, what it is. Perhaps they take a selfie, whatever. But it, our culture about how we handle photography has changed tremendously. Um, this is how, how do we see things differently. This is a picture that's taken by my husband. We worked together for many, many years and, um, and he was a great inspiration to me. He taught me from early on to, uh, to enjoy uh, paintings and, and photographs of things that weren't at the geographic because we were both working at the geographic. And he always knew how to see the world a different way and it just it was an inspiration to be together with him when we work together also we put all our pictures into one pile one pot and uh, and you would then say yeah that's true um, she did they did that but um, but then you can always go back and find the, the exit data and, and, and look at whose camera it was. Yeah, that's good. But it doesn't work like that. There's a camera right in front of you. You grab it and you use it. So we used each other's cameras also. So it is not, you can't tell who, who did what. But this is one of the things where he um, introduced me 
uh, to Ansel Kiefer, the, the German painter that I absolutely adore. Amazing uh, paintings that you can see. San Francisco has a lot of them hanging in their museum in um, SF MoMA. Um, oh, this comes from Philadelphia uh, Museum. Wonderful pieces. And then here, okay, this picture is not taken by me. This is my daughter and her husband when they obviously got married. This picture is taken by a 12 year old. 12 year old. Um, Clara, she was right there. She took the photograph. It's, a, it, it's not the greatest quality, but um, that's because I don't have the, a great quality part of it. But, um, but again, photography has changed so much. Clara has a great talent for taking pictures, but it's just, it has opened up to all of us. And this is taken with an iPhone, of course. Um, but there are certain elements that are very down to basics for, for all our photography, and that's the light composition in the moment. And of course, there's like the pretty light. Everybody talks about the pretty light. I'm not so enamored with it. There's light here also, um, and this is light in Black Rock Desert. Um, some of you will know also that that supplier uh, from uh, Burning Man. And, um, and then uh, that's the light in nighttime there. Here, light after sunset. Um, that is in the Ross Sea down in Antarctica. That's as far down south as I have ever been in Antarctica. That was far away. But um, if, you, if you should ever think about going to Antarctica, go to the peninsula, much more wildlife there. And this is from the peninsula. This is from, um, from uh, Brown Bluff and photographing penguins. This is also another thing. This is, of course, an overcast day. The light is magical, beautiful that way. And another type of light, you say, what on earth? What is the, what's she doing now? Okay, well, I'm, I'm showing you this picture. There's two dolphins that are mating. It is from East Timor. And of course, it was very dark in nighttime there. And, and then we went and got an, um, an LED light and lowered it down, used it like that. And I just, uh, it's one of my favorite images. And back to the painters. I, I tell you, you really, if you need some inspiration, you just need to sit by one, uh, some art gallery or some, uh, or a museum wherever it's close to you. This is Edgar Degas um, painting of the amateur jockeys uh, at the race ground. But why did I choose this? Because I love this painting. I love it because of the composition. I love it because of, you know, look at that hind leg of that horse over there. There's, there's not in there coming galloping in. And from the, the wagon in the foreground, you have the wheels, you have a, a gentleman that's half cut out there, cut off. And the, 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 the wagon is not there either. You have horses that only have two or three legs. How often have you heard about, oh, they all have to have so many legs, but they have to have four legs, but it's not true. It really isn't. So every time things go a little askew, I think about this painting. So that's good. Here, one of my favorites. And that is uh, Jacques, Jacques Henri Lartique. Um, the French photographer, he started as a photographer when he was seven and, um, and then he went on photographing all his life. His pictures were not available before in the 1960s, but boy, they are beautiful, all of them. He has been a great in inspiration for me too. So this is about the composition you notice Latique's picture had the, had the circles, um, the, uh, the gas painting had the circles. And I put a little bit of circles together for you. Circles in 
Kyoto circles looking down at a prima ballerina in uh, Copenhagen on stage on under performance. Um, circles of wild dogs in Paro in, um, in Bhutan. And circles here again, those red circles and, and the fish. Well, those are kind of weird looking fish because have you ever seen a mackerel that blue? No, but what happened was there was a blue tarp on top of it, on top of, of where the stall was in the market. <clears throat> and the fish all reflected the, the blue light there. So just be aware, look always for the light, always. A, and light um, is so many different things. And uh, I think everybody that has been on assignment knows that right now that in old days, you oh, you could wait for the good light. You don't wait for any good light. You have to find it. You have to find it all the time. And it's there. And here, this is a, a circle picture that I, I took here in February. Uh, I returned to Deception Island in South Jetland in the Antarctica. And um, we are, okay, the circles. I look at, look at it, the circle in the foreground there, it's cut off, um, just like in the painting, just like in Latique's photograph. And then you have circles in the middle ground and the background. So you have like foreground, middle ground, and background with circles. But every time, what's the trump card? Always the moment. The moment two French women sitting in front of their, their store in, in Paris, and early morning, Sunday morning, reading, smoking cigarettes, and then looking really upset with me. Really, it was just like, why don't you go someplace else, lady? And, um, and then the thing is, when, when the moment is there, you don't start to ask anyone, oh, could I please take your picture? You don't do that. I don't do it. Well, you may do it, but I don't. Um, and when you're on public space, public land, um, you it's information and you should be capable of doing it. There are places, of course, in the world where you cannot do that at all. Um, uh, but this this could be done there. So where you're shooting position, position and angles and use different lenses, here, this is what I call the shootout in the OK Corral. Um, this is the Gen 2 penguin standing there in the foreground looking like a, a cowboy from the Western movies and it looks like the shift belt have lost one leg out already. Um, I really love that picture too. And there's a more pedestrian picture of just looking down the street, just shot from a low angle a couple of stones are wet. You get like perspective in when you when you look at the woman, she's set off by the by the light background. It's like one thing you also need to do all the time. Think about where, whatever you want to have to stand out in a photograph. It uh, it has to be set off from the background. Uh, and when it gets to wildlife, uh, the, you have to be together with the wildlife. You can't stand up there. You have to get down, sit in the surf, uh, be on your knees, whatever you can do, but you, 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 that's the way you handle that. Or you, if you want to have an overall shot, you can also do like my friend Ralph Lee Hopkins here that um, he uses his monopart to, um, to take overall shots. Yeah, and of course, we all know it, that the exposures, the, it's a creative decision that controls the mood quality and feel of the image. So here we go. Um, this is from South Georgia also, um, and it was a cold day. Um, it was snowing and then the, batter, the catabatic winds came down from the mountain and they come with such force it is so, um, so difficult, but um, they make for good pictures, you know? Bad weather makes good photographs. Or here, in nighttime, this is like, I always imagine it's Moby Dick, 
Moby Dick, that's, a, that's the iceberg there. And then it's a, all the penguins are scattered all over it. And then the searchlight from, from the vessel uh, is turned on and that's what kind of focuses your, your eye in on, on the berg. So an old trick in the book is to look for patterns. Your brain loves patterns. My brain loves patterns too. And there's patterns dancing in the desert in Morocco. Um, that's the Berbers. Or the, also Morocco, this is uh, at the souk um, in Habus in Casablanca. I worked many times in Morocco. It's really nice. Or here, an appetizer for us uh, getting close to dinner. Yeah, this is uh, the meat store in Paro in Bhutan. Um, I really love that too. And here, another pattern shot. This is sometimes when you go to the bar, lots of good things happen. And I just went to the bar of my favorite restaurant, restaurant in Casablanca and shot this pattern shot there. And from the soup also in Marrakesh, amazing amount of different shoes. You can get a shoe for any occasion there. And um, another type of a pattern shot from, um, this is from Pamplona in Spain, when they start running with the bull. This is like the, the start of the whole thing. It's, uh, everybody has these bandanas on. It's for San Ferrin and, um, <clears throat> Uh, I sat up on a fence for a heck of a long time to just get this photograph. I knew that they were going to have a lot of champagne. Also, the little rascals bring in flower bags too and, uh, and other good stuff. Like, uh, and they throw it all up in the air. And I had definitely taped up all my cameras with, with, with plastic bags and so on because I knew what was coming next. Uh, but it all worked out. Reflections, one of my favorite things. Here we go. Reflections from, from Svalbard. Um, magical light, magical um, landscapes beautiful beautiful and then these sometimes these totally placid uh, water the, the water and um, it just makes for marvelous pictures another reflection totally different used for uh, architecture this is in berlin right next to the bundestag and um and that is several buildings in it and uh, just enjoy it for what it is and, and, and another reflection, reflection from, uh, with wildlife. This is a fin whale and fin whales sometimes lay in the surface and kind of sleep. They can switch down half their brain and then uh, they hang there in the surface. But then you see how the, how the sky is reflected in the ocean right there. And it's, a, it's in the late evening. So it makes it uh, really dreamy and, and wonderful. And here, reflections, you get reflections from, from polished marble floors. This is the Hassan de uh, Mosque in Casablanca. And by the way, I was almost being kicked out of the mosque for taking this photograph. You can. You can take pictures in there, nothing to do with you. He just got a little upset with me, I guess, because I was putting my camera all the way down to the floor. That seemed to be something other tourists wouldn't do. So I just, and a whole different type of reflections, but where it's like telling, telling the story, telling where you are. Well, can you see where I am? because I can see it clearly. I am in Mexico and uh, this is my comfy transport right there, going, uh, going out to the, in the panhandle of Puebla State where I spent a week together with a, with a um, shaman, a, a female shaman. 
she um, she performed a couple of services when I was there. We had a lot of fun together. But right then, you know, you see how many people there they are. And, and uh, another type of, of uh, reflection, uh, St. Petersburg, this is the Cathedral of Spilled Blood. And, you know, in Russia, they have the windows far apart. The, the double pane windows are not like close together like they are here in Scotland or in in the United States or in Denmark, um, but there there's kind of like 10 centimeters between the two window panes and that gives a reflection like this. And humor. Humor is going to be difficult because I can never hear you laugh and that's so there you go. <laughs> but um, humor is like when it looks like the iceberg is um, is like a big monster ready to chowing down the the Adelie penguin in the foreground. Um, by the way, humor and, and photograph, I think, is a very difficult discipline because there's a lot of humor that's not very well placed. Um, here's a humor also. Um, there is a dog sitting outside the butcher's store and there is a, a, a piece of meat that just arrived with, in the wheelbarrow and then you get, yeah, you got that. This is what happens to, to little innocent pigs. They get, they get the knife there. And a different type of humor also, these, these are, um, they are king penguin chicks. And for some reason, don't ask me why, this woman had chosen just a hat so she looked like an over, overgrown chick penguin. Um, of course, I showed her the photograph and she was totally fine with it. So it's all, all good. Um, or when the elephant seal starts to sing, look like an opera singer right in front of you. That is humor to me. And the, in the surface, here we go. In the surface, that's about the ocean. And um, that's about, uh, with this photograph here, I was standing on deck of the of this ship everybody else had gone someplace inside. I was out there by myself and I, I saw this uh, wal walrus and it was just swimming in the water. And I took that picture and I just thought, this is really magical what takes place in the surface. You remember the picture of the fin wheel that I showed early on. And, and I thought, oh, I, I think I should, kind of look for that. These kind of pictures do not come on a daily basis, really. They come ever so often. And so therefore, I'm just gonna show you a couple of pictures uh, from there. This, this picture is taken with the regular DSLR. Um, and then this, yeah, this is also, this is a mirrorless camera, Sony mirrorless. And um, this is, to me, it looks like a Moro, um, from Easter Island, one of these little guys, that little piece of white ice right there. And um, look how your eye goes straight to it because it's white. Very easy. Always white things that shows up in your imagery. It is always something you're going to look straight at. And here, I don't know if you have the same experience as I do with the screen. Uh, if you have like a, 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 a column out on the, on the one side there, um, because the, the picture kind of doesn't look um, as it should, but this is a, um, a uh, what is it? That's a, no, some type of a seal. This, uh, and then, swimming in the surface. And this here uh, also, <clears throat> uh, this is a leopard seal coming up towards the zodiac. Le leopard seal has a tendency of kind of showing its teeth ever so often. Um, and uh, they, that's what they do. And, and I, I tell you, 
some somewhere in in my head there's i I kind of get into moods with my photography um, and my mood here when I was in in um, Antarctica this time was I'm not going to photograph with any of the big cameras. I really am not. I'm photographing with my iPhone um, and that that is it. Come rain, come shine. And I'm not going to go over um, times two because then you get a deterioration of the image that is amazingly bad. So, um, so I just held it just straight, just on, on one and um, and I photographed I, and I really loved it. I thought it was great. I think sometimes when you, when you give yourself challenges, with, when you change these things, and you, then it, it, it really is a, um, a refreshing thing to do. It's inspirational. I, at one time, I photographed a, a, a whole portfolio of of flowers in uh, in pinhole with pinhole, and at that time it was um, it was very very difficult to get used to that you couldn't put a focus in you had to kind of the only tool you had was light and shadow that was it and boy it it really changed my photography it was really amazingly wonderful. So here, this is still the iPhone, um, also in the surface. This, the seal is falling down, the ice flow gave in. And um, also, this is taken also with the Sony. Um, this is a minke whale coming right up to the zodiac. Uh, sometimes these critters, these beautiful whales, they, can be very curious too. And um, luckily for me, the, the weather was good, gray, overcast, and uh, not too much wind. So therefore, it was really easy to get a lovely image of it. I mean, look at that eye down there on the left-hand side. It's, it's pretty damn amazing. It's coming up looking at you. And, or the, the other way, just the form, the form of the, um, in the surface, the form of, of the <clears throat> of, of the um, humpback whale, and then the iceberg behind, behind it mimics the shape of, of the humpback whale. So um, interpret your world. Uh, that's what I do all the time. But here we go. Um, this is a polar bear. And I have to say, I stood there together with 50 people. Everybody was like firing nonstop at this polar bear. And you know, somehow it happened. They stopped shooting and the polar bear did what it's doing right there. Kind of, for me, holding on to the environment, the, this precious environment, this, this environment that's disappearing. It's like, it's hugging it and that please, don't go away because it is so damn um, dependent on the ice. It, it, it can't, it can't get any food. If it doesn't have ice, it can't, get, it can't get food. So um, that is how I interpreted the picture. So there you go. And then I, I put this on, on, on purpose because I thought, oh yeah, we are going to go from pristine white and right to something a little more dirty. And um, this is a pilgrim in Lhasa in Tibet. And um, he is just making his rounds. And you can see, I mean, his picture, his feet are telling a story about he has traveled far to get to this spot. I, I, I mean, I think it's amazing. And of course you have to get a little down on hands and knees to take these pictures. And then people look at you like you're a weirdo, but I'm used to it. And um, another type of picture here, this is from an installation. I will have to say, I kind of debated if I should put it in, but I always loved it. Um, also taken with the iPhone, taken last summer. And uh, it is, it's actually a bed. And then 
on top is is the universe and she is like floating in the universe and it, it, i was just thinking about the hubble telescope that we right now have received the most amazing imagery from the universe from so that was the reason why I got it in. So fill your frame with the subject you want to photograph. Here, this is it. The, the, this is in, in the parking lot. I had to photograph this kite and uh, they were putting it together because they were going to use it. It's a fighter kite and, um, and it, was, uh, it was in the parking lot. I crawled in under to be together with these gentlemen and then uh, also to cover up, you know, you have to find your standpoint in order for you to get a good imagery. But it's also the eye contact that's very important. And here, this is a humpback whale coming, cruising. And um, I say, not always, but a lot of times, um, wildlife is, is almost, is always most fun to photograph if you can photograph it with a wide angle. And um, this, this was taken in December. I was in Germany and it rains as usual. And I just loved the way that the colors were displayed and the, the rain darks on the plastic and a little bit of reflections from, from the fluorescent lights around. It just really tickled me pink. And from my hometown, um, a little bit different. I thought also uh, I could, uh, I could wake you up a little bit ever so often, you know. Um, and so this is, uh, I think I, I could call it, I should have danced all night, but perhaps she did. And uh, juxtaposition, right scale. Here you see one picture. It's a heck of a big iceberg. And the picture ended up on the cover of National Geographic Traveler, um, Australia. That was good. And then photographing people. This is my favorite thing. Photographing people is what I like to do the most. So let me go through it really quickly because I know, Laura, we are getting to go behind. I can see the clock from here. This is, this is what I don't want you to do. I, it, 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 this is really what I don't want to do. You should perhaps do what you want, but I, I, it, it's appalling. Uh, you, you get your big DS, uh, DLSR and, <clears throat> and you, you think it gives you a ticket to stick a camera right in people's face. The woman is scared. Look at her son down there. He is scared too. This guy, I, I wonder what picture he's getting. Um, I've been sitting and saying, but he's missing a lot. He's missing all the blue around her, all these things, but he's then in her, in, in violating her space. This is not good photography. When you, when you have to experience what people experience, just be together with them and just, they will, they will just do their own thing. Like this mother, she is exhausted. She has one, child nursing, one child begging for attention. And I think, um, I think most of us that, that have uh, had children know this feeling. This is a, a whole different ways, like serene thing. This is, um, it, every time when I look at this photograph, I say to myself, you can't convince people that you didn't set it up. I did not set it up. This happened in front of me. We had been painting a family photograph. We had been painting, uh, and then it, it happened that uh, after, after lunch, it was nap time, and then this took place. Um, in Germany, I stood there and waited for people to get into the right spot. This is from the, the Berlin Wall, the part there's a museum now. And my favorite shot, St. Petersburg in, uh, in a rainy evening, uh, this woman came walking 
towards me. I was obviously going the other direction and I could just see her, the colors, the colors that she was wearing, they were really attractive to me. And I knew there was a photograph right there and I lifted up my camera, but I also knew that if I was going to get it all the way up to my eye, I would never get that photograph. So this is taken from, um, from chest height and, um, and it, it worked like that. Everything is out of focus except for her. So I panned a little bit with her. I love that she's smoking a cigarette. I, not that I like, oh, I don't like people smoking cigarettes, but I loved that, that she's coming like that. Or the, the young woman also that just walked straight toward me. She knew what I was doing and she was looking straight into the camera. I went on taking pictures. She went on looking at me and then she passed by me. And then this is, this is out from uh, a, a low caste in India where they were preparing for a wedding. <clears throat> and from Germany, this is the kiss. And the pictures do not need to be sharp in order for them to be successful for me to evoke a feeling. It's just a matter, photography is really a matter of feelings. It's a matter of, does it make an impression on you, okay? There's lots of pictures that are just like, that to me, a gloss, and, and you, they don't do anything. And um, hanging out in night times, uh, this is a, a German, uh, German bar where uh, this is at two in the morning. I was probably the oldest one in there, but so it is. And in the nighttime, they can't see it anymore. And here, Another situation, uh, this little boy had, the, the monk, he had been going his rounds, uh, praying, and, um, and I was taking pictures of people uh, that were coming around, you know, they had to go around in a circle, and then um, he kind of looked at me, and then he went over there, he posed, he posed for a couple of seconds, and then he was off. Um, and again from ballet, here we go, troop transport in Russia, and also in Russia, this is a cathedral spilt block. Um, and the evil eye, I get the evil eye always, always, always in the in the bus. In I use I, I I use a lot of buses when I'm on assignment, and this is uh, from New York City and also New York. Okay, Laura, are you there? Yes, I am. <laughs> now, what do you want me to do now? I um, can go on a little farther, but I can also not. Do you have more pictures to share? Sure. I can go on forever, you know. You can go on, on forever. Oh, okay. <laughs> Okay, quick, 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 quick. All right, here, here, here. And so now when we are all sitting here at home, wherever we are, um, in self, uh, I call it self-inflicted pain. Now it's, it's like self-isolation. Um, and actually it's not bad. I really kind of like certain aspects of it. I love this thing about that in nighttime when I wake up, perhaps I have to go to the bathroom and I know exactly where I am because for years right now it's been like that I didn't know really where I was I was just traveling all the time and so being a little grounded is pretty damn good so what can you do at home you can take pictures you can take pictures of this is my granddaughter the most amazing Cadis you can take pictures of Cadis you can take pictures of flowers. I, as I told you, I love taking pictures of flowers. These are lilies. Um, and this is, um, this is the tulips, the tulips, and, and tulips, are, 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 they're wonderful because they are decaying. They are, they are way past their prime, but I love the beauty of them. And uh, also lilies. Uh, that was also beautiful, taken here in my kitchen. All right, quick, Laura, Morocco, quick, quick, quick. I can just run through them. Okay, right. I run through them. 
Okay, you get the finger all the time. I get the finger. I give the finger. This is this is the index finger, not the middle finger. She is warning me. Okay, I get it all the time. But I don't think she really knew that I was taking a picture because it's taken also from the chest level. But she knew that I had a camera in my hand. This is from the souk. This is um, when you hold back a little bit, sometimes you get something good. Don't, don't always be in the front of the whole thing. And this is um, late in the evening and I was standing and waiting for some friends. And then this little tableau happened in the foreground. And then this is, I can tell you, because I had to write it down because I always forget it. So it's eight Benhado. And that is the city right there. It was on the on the route between um, Sahara and up to Marrakesh. And this is in a sandstorm. Now look at that. There's a two little people out there in the middle of nowhere really getting a lot of sand. But um, beautiful, beautiful landscape. I love Morocco. It's so much fun. Yeah, yeah. So also they know where the meat comes from. Um, and that that's a good thing not like we they only experience it in little packages in the in the supermarket and photographing people in the market photographing women in the streets it's not easy but you can do it and photographing the men when they are talking i love that versace shirt i guess that's really what attracted me also a smoker and um, but i love the blues and those blue walls are just like a day to die for they're so beautiful and women walking i love the way they are dressed beautifully dressed the woman there in red you know look even down to her shopping bag and then uh, they have an espresso with them too uh, and then more traditional picture grandmother and son coming up the street in rabat and the selfie, the younger generation having a whole different um, relationship to imagery. This young girl is sheltering herself from me. She's raising up her hand. And this one um, happens to be one of my favorite pictures from Morocco. And um, this is taken in a, a Berber village and it's taken through a curtain that was just hanging in the street. I don't know why it was hanging there, but it was. And then you see parts of the buildings that are decaying, falling apart behind it. And um, I loved it. Or in the, in the, in the market, this is Marrakesh in the big market. Um, I, I'd say just, I, I, put this picture in where you have her hand because it's a woman in the foreground and you can see her hand. She's giving in money to the, to the, the stall owner. Um, but I love the scarf. I love the scarf, how it actually looked like a face to me. And things happens in front of your camera. Uh, I, I had experienced a little bit, there was a, a little bit of some punks that were, that were trying to hop into the water of this reflecting pool. And a woman came passing by and then at the same time, this guy just hopped right into midair. He's on his way down into the water. A traditional picture, um, old man, you know, walking down the street. Uh, really nice. I like the play of the of the blue and the white, and and then um, the little boy in the background also have blue on coming down the street, um, and photographing in the in the market a woman by herself <coughs> at an eating stall. And I again, I really don't know how much you have of the image because. Um, the image is actually out on the right hand side there where, where she is um, lifting up her hand, this, this woman. Um, I love the very harsh shadows, light and shadows. Yeah, this is from uh, Casablanca again. This is <clears throat> inside the 
Edith Piaf's favorite bar. I went in there and I asked if I could take pictures and that was an absolutely no. So uh, I turned around and on my way out, I saw this image and I just lifted my camera and took it. And that, that really was a wonderful thing. And out in the desert, um, the Bedouins uh, at, at moonrise, right at sunset, and I don't know, I, I never asked him to do that. I, I can't do stuff like that. I don't have a brain to arrange imagery. It doesn't work for me. And then there you go. This is in the nighttime when they go home. And that is just me with my favorite camera, uh, the iPhone 11. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Sissy. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs> I'm back. Wait, let me find my camera. Your camera? My camera. Oh, there. oh, yeah, yeah. Oh. Also, okay. All right. Uh -huh. So, as promised, we will have a bit of a Q and A session. So, if you have any questions for Sisa, you can put them in the chat tool, and uh, she will answer them. We haven't had any so far, so maybe I just, right. I just get I, started. I everybody out. <laughs> <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> There's still people there. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, maybe I just kick it off. Um, so in our previous webinars with uh, Christian and with Arne Hodalic, um, they very much revolved about taking portraits, either with natural light or flash. And I was wondering what your preference is and why. Sure. I, um, I definitely am always used daylight. I... Mm, I have gone through periods where I've been using a lot of flash um, and um, I don't do it anymore at all. And, and I don't think there's any reason to do it really anymore. Um, th these cameras are just so sophisticated the way that they work that there's no really, really good reason. I mean, um, I, at, at, a, at a time at, at my career at the geographic, I, I had 32 pieces of luggage when I would come home from an assignment. That was also the most I've ever had. I was uh, photographing in the prehistoric painted caves in France, which requires a lot of equipment. But I looked at it. So I think, um, I don't know, Libre-Jean came by and they wanted to take a picture of me with all my equipment. So I said, oh no. So I dragged it all out um, on, on M Street and, and I just looked at it. after. And when they had taken the picture, they were gone. So I just looked at it and said, life is too short. I don't want to do this. I can't do this anymore. I'm really good at it but I can't do it. I don't want to. So that was how I cut down on, on all flash and, and all kind of things. And then, at, well, then at, at a certain time, I used a 283 a lot, a Vivitar 283 a lot, but uh, for years now, I don't do it. I'm happy without it. Okay. You know, I, I just like my shoulders. I can't take it. I can't take all this weight. I, I, and I want to I wanna think about the pictures. I want to think about creating the images. And I want to think about equipment. Mm -hmm. It's just it's a bore and a drag. Mm -hmm. All right. Then we have a few questions in the meanwhile. Um, OK. How do you photograph people in a foreign land when you do not speak the language? Well, I guess you already um, touched up on that. Yeah, I, I, well, in Morocco, I, I do not speak any, um, any Arabic or uh, I speak a tiny bit of French, but, um, but then, uh, you know, a lot, of, a lot of the pictures that you saw were really with a very minimal amount of contact between me and the subject I photographed. It is like a split second very often. Uh, to that, I don't need it. But, you know, it, when you are in a situation where 
you need to communicate because if that happens a lot too but um then if the if there's a, a if people are willing there's a way to understand each other it's all good i mean you i can i can speak no language and i can speak it all because just like it's just a kind of making it i i can communicate without speaking the language that's a it's a good thing mm -hmm. yeah um then there's a question like a follow-up question on that you make it sound easy to still take pictures of people when they signal you not to i find that very hard and i usually just give up how do you work through sure. their refusal yeah um I, I, these refusals here that you saw um, weren't really refusals, I think. Refusals is when somebody says, I don't want you to take my picture. And you know what? That's fine with me. It's, it's all good. I, I, I cause um, rejection is a, it's a pretty hard thing for every human being, but you know, hey, there's so many other things, so many other people to take pictures of, so many other situations. It, it's people's priority. So, okay, I go on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. I, I'm a little sulky for a couple of minutes, but <laughs> that's it. Uh huh. Um. How long does an assignment for National Geographic typically take? Well, that's a good question to where I cannot take, I, ca I cannot give you the answer anymore, by the way, because first of all, right now with the coronavirus, I don't know exactly what's going on. But, but second of all, I haven't worked with the Geographic magazine since 2004. The magazine and I had, um, um, what do you say? Hmm. I don't know if it's disagreement. I, I guess I can be very pick-headed um, and uh, the magazine can also be um, willful to be saying a nicer word. Um, so we were a little bit on a collision course and um, therefore I, I didn't, I haven't worked for them ever since. It was, um, I mean, I admire the magazine. I love the magazine, but, um, but I do not work for them. I work for Traveler, you know, and I work for Expeditions. Mm -hmm. so. And there was one question regarding the post-production for National Geographic. Maybe you can answer that one. Um, Which, yeah. If they allow any post-production editing beyond cropping. Uh, yeah, the geographic have always corrected the the colors of, of their imagery. Um, at certain time, you would say that was was it a little over exaggerated, uh, um, over saturated? Hmm, I don't know. But I think they're very good at printing. I think, um, but but you have to you have to correct the colors. But do they move things in and out? They only moved the pyramids once and that was enough. And they, they learned their lesson. And, they, and it, 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 it's something um, so long time ago and they, they don't move, they don't move stuff. They don't move um, like if there's a, a telephone pole sticking out of somebody's head, they don't move it, you can't do that. Um, then it's not photojournalism, then mm -hmm. it's a whole different game. It could be art photography, it could be, um, it could be uh, advertising photography, but it's not documentary. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. <laughs> yeah, um, it's very important to, to distinguish between these, these um, different disciplines. Yeah, true. Especially nowadays where you where you have trouble trusting pictures. Oh, then you, you it, it's so hard, you know, can you trust the image that you see? And um, it's it's uh, for all of us to be very alert and not take things for granted and so on. Question what is there? And you have to you have to be informed, you have to 
you have to be um, yeah inquisitive and you have and try try to decipher the image mm -hmm. also mm -hmm. I read images I read, I read them really fast uh, most often but I, I do that um, and I, I know what to look for uh, and and I mean, I, I, technology is amazing but um, it, it, it can't like well alter an image you cannot do that for documentary photography mm -hmm. out of the question then we have a few questions regarding your equipment um what lens or lenses do you always bring Ooh. on your trip yeah <laughs> well um i i do bring several cameras you know oh think about if it breaks but um, I also very much in the mood of not having more than one camera around the neck, on my neck. Um, and very often I'm shooting with a, a 24 millimeter I, I, the fixed lens. I, uh, I do almost right now not shoot with any kind of zooms or longer lenses when I am in a cityscape. It's a whole different ball game when you're together with wildlife. Mm -hmm. Yeah, especially in Svalbard with with the polar bears. The polar bears require long lenses. They really do. You don't want to be close to a polar bear. I don't want to be close to a polar bear. But not really. No. <laughs> it's a bad idea. <laughs> yeah. Um, do you ever use a GoPro? No, I don't. Um, my husband and I did use GoPros when, when he was alive and together, but no. But it's, um, it's very good. I mean, there's no doubt about that. Yeah, for certain situations, it's yeah, definitely yeah. a good choice. Yeah, definitely. It's very good. Um, then another question. Well, I guess you kind of answered that in your presentation. Uh, where's a good place to find your photographs? Oh, that's a good question. Hmm. I don't know. <laughs> you can find them on Instagram. That's, that's the best place. Yeah. Mm, yeah. Let's, let's just leave it with that. Instagram. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, and one last question. Um, your images are always uniquely composed, I feel. The way you use the frame is very refreshing and seems to go against more traditional composition rules. Is this something you think about prior to taking the shot? Yes, it is. Definitely. Um, I, I, I think it's up in my head all the time and I, I want to have something that is different, is unique, something that I hadn't seen before, something that when I walked into it, I didn't know it was really there. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. I, I definitely want to do that. I'm happy that it's apparent that I, I don't follow the rules like a, a lot of other people do. I, um, I mean, I've done it. I've done these rules. And, and they, they're really, really good. You have, you have to know them, but you also have to let go of them. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. Okay. Then thank you so much for your yeah. time tonight and for yeah. sharing your images and knowledge with us. Yeah. Um, okay. We already mentioned it, but we will run a workshop with uh, and Svabat in August and we have a few cabins yes. left on our expedition ship. So if you uh -huh. want to photograph polar bears and icebergs yourself, then mm -hmm. check your, our yeah. website for more information. Yeah. Um, as with all or our workshops, you or if, if you want to go to Morocco. Or if you want, want to go to Morocco, Morocco. we also have that yeah. in autumn, yes. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, of course, if we have to cancel workshop because of coronavirus, you will receive a 100% refund yeah. on the workshop price. So you're not taking any, any risks there. Um, yeah, as always, we will send out a recording of the webinar, um, either today or to, no, tomorrow or the day after tomorrow. So you mm -hmm. can rewatch it later. 
and we will host a few other webinars with our Better Moments experts in the next couple of weeks or months, okay. who knows uh, mm -hmm. where we are heading. So sign up for our newsletter to be the first to know. And yeah, that's all mm -hmm. for tonight from us. I hope you learned something new today. Thanks. Thank yeah. you, Sisse, and thanks yeah. to everyone else. Thanks for joining us. Enjoy the rest of your day, and I hope to uh -huh. see you again for our next webinar. I just want to say thank you to everybody for joining me. Really nice. Okay, thank you. Bye bye. Yeah, good night. Okay, are you there? Oh, we are off. Boop, 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 boop. Stop share. There we go. <coughs> <coughs>